Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Monday, the 26th of February, and we're joined by the one and only John Porter again this morning. He's very kindly agreed to uh, grace us with his presence here on TNT, today's news talk. He is a uh, broadcaster. Uh, well, I don't know. Call him an investigative journalist. Call him whatever you like, uh, but he's part of the wonderful Chasing Descent podcast that you can follow and support on the YouTube channel. Welcome back, John, and how are you doing this fine Monday morning? Cheers, Rick. I'm doing great. Um, I've uh, always good to see you guys again. N- nice to see you back, Natalie, after your absence last week. Um, I did offer to fill in, but unfortunately, your boots are too big for me. But we're looking forward to getting the both of you on to um, Jason Descent on mm-hmm. 6th of March, I think. So I we're looking forward so. to that. Yeah. What I would say, though, is put on a brighter shirt. No, this is this is my bright oh, shirt. Oh, this is our uh, this is our uniform. <laughs> this is my bright shirt. Our <laughs> you, do, you do want to see you do want to see our dark uniform. Believe me, this yeah. is our bright and uh, our <laughs> uniform. Uh, we're, we're having a chuckle, John, just before you came on there. Natalie was saying about uh, you know she was off work last week, and I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna drop her in it here. When the headline broke about Alexei uh, Navalny being associated, she mistook it for Dylan Mulvaney. You know no, the blood no guy baby, and, uh, last year. So we just had to reassure. No, it's not. Not, not Dylan Mulvaney. It's actually Alexei Navalny. Oh, but there's a yeah, there's different a whole person, horrible, different story. Different. Maybe he's next to the KGB or he MI6 could. hit list. We don't know. But uh, there's an awful lot going on in and around this one here, John. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. it dominated the headlines when it first happened. Yeah. but it hasn't yeah, gone away. Uh, new strands and things are appearing here. Uh, what do you make of it in terms of, of course, Britain and uh, NATO are blaming Putin. But my experience mm-hmm. is when they're pointing the finger of blame at someone else, there's usually three yeah. fingers pointing back at them. What do you make of this? Well, yeah, I mean, all we'll have to do is look at the evidence. So, you know, Navalny, Navalny's allegedly Putin's top, um, what would you call it, opposition. Mm-hmm. No, no, he, he was polling 1% to 2%. When he was a politician, he was associated with neo-Nazism in Russia. Um, so he, he wasn't really covering himself in any kind of glory. So if, if your top opposition was was Navalny, it's like saying Richard Tice is going to be the next prime minister. And that's not going to happen. So moving on, what's Putin got to gain from, from Navalny's death? Because this is this is coming up on the, the anniversary of the... Well, this is the anniversary of the SMO starting. That's it today. So... We're coming up on the anniversary of the SMO, where we're, com- we're coming up on the Russian elections, we're coming up on the anniversary of the Skripals. Remember the Skripals? The Novichok mm-hmm. poisoning that happened in mm-hmm. uh, uh, just down the road from a certain place that actually is one of the only two places outside of Russia that holds Novichok. That's pouring down. Um, and then, you know, what's... What's he got to gain? What's he got to gain by knocking this guy off? Because it doesn't make sense. I mean, we had Tucker Carlson do his, his famous interview, and the, and Tucker then asks the most naive question ever: Can we take Evan Gershowitz back with us? You know, and and Putin gave the game away there because he said it's it's being discussed. It's in channels. Well, that means that Gershowitz is a CIA op because if it's in channels, the FSB is talking to the CIA. And, you know, there's no way Gershowitz was ever going to go back with, Nuk- with Tucker. And Tucker should have known that. It's a stupid question to ask him. Really, that was the one part of the interview that really disappointed me more than anything, apart from the fact he didn't really push back that much. Mm-hmm. But other than that, we've now got the UK, and part of that Tucker advert, uh, interview was um, was Boris. You know, Boris being exposed to the normal people because we've been talking about it for years. You've been talking about it. We've been talking about it. And this is what you said last week, Rick, about it really being important to listen to independent media because if you hadn't listened to independent media, that Boris thing came as a revelation. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't. Boris went to Ukraine and suddenly any potential peace deal was put aside and they all went straight to war. And hundreds of thousands of people have died on both sides unnecessarily. But moving on, a, what's the UK? 
Sorry, I was going to say just uh, just you mentioned there about uh, you know the numbers of people that are dead as well. If you noticed yesterday, uh, uh, Zelensky came out with figures to say, uh, but we have lost eighteen thousand troops. Russia's lost hundreds of thousands of casualties. There are people out there that will take what that mm -hmm. lying rat says at face value, and then they'll pipe that yeah. around their friend circles. But of course, we know the figures are horribly skewed against the Ukrainians and towards the the Russians. And let's face it, all. All yeah. the deaths are totally unnecessary. This could have been prevented back in February of 2022 yeah. because Johnson scuppered the deal. But again, we've been talking about that, but the normies have been kept away from the truth exactly. or don't want to accept it. And hence the importance of doing what we're doing at the minute, just telling exactly. the truth. Yep. And and then we look at, we, so we look at what, what's Britain got to gain about it? Well, Boris is back in the news for the wrong reasons when just before that, they started talking about Boris coming back to the Conservative Party because regardless of what you think of Boris, the public love him, right? The normies love Boris and they, they can't see him doing any wrong. And and he would give them a boost. He would give them a boost. But, you know, so that that didn't help his chances. Then we've got, we've got, uh, what's his name? Navalny's wife is in Munich and she... You know, the the day after he gets he, or he dies, he, suddenly she's got the floor and talking to all of the Munich Security Conference. Um, Britain's been implicated in the downing of the IL seventy six that was carrying the POWs back to um, Ukraine from Russia. Britain's been implicated in all the naval attacks that's happened in the Crimea. They've been implicated in the Nord Stream attack as well. You know, I mean, remember the famous list trust? It's mm -hmm. done. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. so Britain's got an awful lot to gain from deflecting and putting this back on Putin. What what's Putin got to gain? Nothing. It just makes him look stupid at a time when he's coming up for election. You know, when when other people are coming up for election. I mean, this is going to be the most elections ever this year, everywhere. Um, so I think MI six had a hand in it because what's his name's lawyer visited him two days before. You know, Navalny's lawyer visited him two days before he dies. Navalny was known to be taking drugs. Um, maybe he slipped him a package that had something more than you know more than it should have had in it. Um, as a possibility. It's and and then to put the icing on the cake, what happened yesterday? Budinov, you know, the Ukraine's uh, intelligence chief comes out and goes, No, he, he he actually just had a heart attack, he died of a blood clot. So he's like, Oh no, 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 we had nothing to do with it. We didn't help the British at all because Let's face it, Ukraine, Russia, you know, if any if any country's intertwined, I mean, look at, what's his name, Sarzy the Butcher, his family still live in Russia, his brother still lives in Russia, you know, the guy's a Russian. <laughs> John, John, John there's a, I, Natalie, I was going to say, I was just going to ask you a question, all these uh, speculations going on about the cause of death as well, the, the, the craziest one that I've seen so far is, Someone has been able to ask his head. Well, they took him outside in his underpants, made him stand at minus 27 degrees Celsius, and then listen to this. This is the icing on the cake. They killed him with the infamous KGB heart punch. So they said Single someone punch. stripped him into his pants, made him stand outside until it got cold enough, and then punched him in the chest, and that's how they killed him. How do they yeah. know this? I mean, again, people yeah, are actually spreading this around. You know, how do they know this Rick, now? Wouldn't they have t if that was the case, wouldn't they have at least filmed it, you know, as yes. a, you know, to put it out Somebody there? Somebody would have had their camera, example. right, wouldn't they? Somebody but, but, but would have had their camera, right? But they're missing the trick, because I did read that Ukraine said it was a blood clot. Maybe he died suddenly yeah. from the vaccine. Well, that, you never know what, that nobody has put that forward at the moment, you know? So maybe we'll just, find that out. That's what Budinov said yesterday. But the, I mean, the other thing is they're saying his chest was covered in bruises. Well, if somebody's had a heart attack, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to give them CPR. And believe me, their chest gets covered in bruises if they live, you know. Because they're calling it the KGB, the KGB the, death, the death punch. punch. That's the new, name, the new name for CPR. Maybe they should yeah. have put that in the breathtaking documentary, uh, you know, yeah. when the NHS were talking about not resuscitating. They said, yeah. we had the KGB death punch them, but we weren't prepared to do it because of droplets, droplets. But anyway, uh, we've got to we've got to put a full stop in this one as per now, John. But very interesting points but that you're making one, there, of course. With the one thing, yeah, one, yeah. one thing, right, just to, to, to put in mind. <clears throat> Has the UK gone rogue? Have they overstepped the mark? Are they pushing too hard now? Because this seems to be more than even America is looking to do. So is the UK trying to assert its position, its former position in the world, as some kind of you know kingmaker? Mm -hmm.
Could be, could be. And certainly if they're not, they're at least, at the very least, we know this, they're working in cahoots and lockstep with whatever their, uh, well, their former handlers, the uh, United States of America, were telling them to do. So interesting points there, uh, John. I'm much appreciated. Thanks, really appreciate John. you coming on again. And uh, please check out uh, Chasing Descent on YouTube and support those guys in any way that you can. So thanks very much to you for that, John. We'll